The boys are back and Celtic are top of the league again for at least the next 21 hours. Welcome back guys to Fog Football. Celtic have defeated St Johnston by three goals to one at Celtic Park. But the scoreline I don't think is a true reflection. St Johnston were really shite in this game. 3-1. Makes it look like they might have been in it and that they kept it pretty close. But the reality is Celtic probably could have scored more than three goals today. Should have should have probably scored four, five, six goals today. Had a couple ruled off for offside. Uh, they hit the woodwork a couple of times too. St Johnston really didn't offer much outside of their goal. And it wasn't that good of a goal. So uh, yeah, not a good performance for St Johnston today. Very timid. Just, uh, I don't know what Craig Lafine's tactics were. So Johnston, last time they came to Celtic Park in the, uh, I think it was August, earlier in the season, they actually got a 0-0 draw, but today they were just so far away from getting anything in this game, it was it was never going to happen. And for some reason, I don't know, they were just really, really poor. So, so Johnston, certainly were not good enough. Celtic were good enough. And you can see with Celtic, I think when they start Keogh go up front, that is when they're at their best. He's not having his best season at Celtic, far from it. You know, it's been by far his worst season, but still, he's a better striker than Adia. He makes the runs, he gets onto balls that Adia just doesn't get onto. When Adia's playing up front, he's more of a stationary target man. Kyogo can make the runs, can get on the through balls, can make things happen, and he does. Thanks to Kyogo playing, Celtic are just able to create a lot more chances. And today, I mean, Kyogo could have easily had a hat trick. He didn't get one, but I mean, if he was just slightly, uh, I mean, we're talking inches as well for some of the offside decisions. I mean, if he could have just stayed on side, if he could have finished a couple of his opportunities better, then yeah, I mean, Kyogo could have easily got three or four today. So, a uh, good win for Celtic. First goal came. On the 40th minute, good header for Kyogo. It was marginal. It looked like it may have been offside. I mean, there was a lot of offsides today. I think Celtic had two disallowed goals, and one of them was a lot closer than the other. Uh, this Kyogo one was close as well. I think it's the correct decision. I think he was onside, but uh, it's, it's the thing with Kyogo. You know, he's so good at time and runs that he wants... That, that's the key to actually making a good run. If you're going to make a good run, then you're just going to marginally be onside. Like, if you're going to be miles onside, then it's not a good run because you haven't timed it. For you to make a good run, which Kyogo's very good at doing, he's very good at reading the ball, he's very good at making the right run at the right time, and for you to do that, then it is going to be very close. And that's why Kyogo, time and time again, does often find himself off time because it's those fine margins. Unlike Dessers, who is more lazy, to be honest, Dessers just finds himself off to offside because he's a lazy uh, shite striker, really, who, who doesn't get back. But with Kyogo, you know, he's, he's constantly making runs. He's constantly trying to penetrate the line of defence. And uh, sometimes that's going to result in you being offside. But uh, he took the head up pretty well. Uh, then Kuhn scored straight after half time. So St Johnston got almost got into half time at 0 0. Celtic got the goal, and, and you're thinking, right, okay, St Johnston aren't offering anything. They do not look like scoring, but it's 1 0. You know, you stay in this, and who knows? A set piece or something like that, maybe you can snatch a draw. One minute into the second half, that was done. It was over. Celtic scored Furuhashi with the assist this time for Kuhn. And, I mean, the defending here for St Johnson, what were they doing? I, I, I've no idea, to be honest. It was really fucking poor. I was at Edwards as well for St Johnson. I thought he was terrible at the back. I think it was Edwards. I don't want to get it mixed up in case I'm, I'm burying the wrong guy here. But I believe... No, Phillips. Uh, Phillips was shocking today, I think, for St Johnson. He was just so, so bad. I mean, every time he'd get the ball in the St Johnston box, he would refuse to clear it, and he ended up playing St Johnston into trouble. Really, really bad performance for him today. Uh, he wasn't good, but, you know, nobody was really good in that St Johnston side. Nobody, for me, got past marks. I mean, Beatoff made a couple of good saves, but, I mean, even... Celtic missed a lot of chances, but it was more down to the fact that Celtic weren't really hitting the target, or they were getting caught offside, rather than Beatoff. Uh, had a, having a great game. I don't think Beatoff was that great. Probably the best St Johnston player on the day, but um, nothing fantastic. So couldn't get the goal. It is 2 0. Alan Forrest came on. I thought Forrest done pretty well. Brendan Rodgers said he's the best winger at the club a few weeks ago. I know Celtic fans were not happy about that. But I think he came on the day. Pretty good job. He got a goal, uh, an assist from O'Reilly. He created some more chances. And yeah, I mean, he, he looked decent, obviously. He's not the player that he once was, and he never will be, mainly down to his age and the fact that he's lost a lot of pace. But I thought 
Forrest looked all right today. And, um, yeah, you know, if he can get back to his best, then he's still going to be a good player for Celtic. But, I don't know, he's just he's not really getting a run of games in the team. It's hard to judge James Forrest. You know, at one time he was a great player. And I know that he's moved on for that. He can't really be a starting 11 player now for Celtic, but I still think he offers something. I, I still think he can be a good squad player. If Celtic are needing goals and James Forrest is coming on with like 20 minutes to go, I still think he's got enough left here to be a difference maker. So he came on, he got a goal today. Good for him. Uh, St. Johnson made a few changes. They brought in Stevie May. I mean, Stevie May at one time, like a decade ago, Stevie May was being talked up as the next big hope for Scottish football, but... His career has just dwindled. He's a, a shell of his former self right now. Offered nothing really going forward for St. Johnston. St. Johnston did get a goal back through Smith. Joe Hart wasn't happy. I don't really blame him. It was a sloppy goal at the back for Celtic to concede. Wasn't very good. St. Johnston got one back. But again, Celtic went on the attack. They could have got a few more after this, to be honest. Uh, uh, Awata had a good opportunity and he headed it just over the bar in, in the dying moment so probably should have got that on target and should have scored but he didn't look in the end Celtic did what they needed to do they got a 3-1 win that was the main thing now obviously if they could have tanked St Johnston today then that would have been great that's what they would have wanted because the goal difference could play a big factor this season but the main thing is getting the win and at the 40 minute mark, before that goal comes in, despite St Johnston being poor and not offering much and despite Celtic creating chances, I reckon there would have been some nerves creeping in because you're five minutes away from going in 0-0 again at half time at Celtic Park against a really poor side. And when you look at it this season, you know, over the last two, three months, how many times have Celtic got to like the half an hour mark or half time and they're not winning and it's still 0-0? And the deadlock has yet to be broken. It's happening a lot. Normally under Ange, by the time Celtic got to half time, they were like 3-0 up. Most games were 3-0 up, but uh, this one, they were not. It was only 0-0, but then 40 minutes in, Kyogo got the goal and it, it took the pressure off Celtic. And then the second goal just killed it a minute into the second half. So, uh, yeah, it was always going to be a Celtic win for that moment onwards. They do get the win. They do go above Rangers in the league table. They move on to 71 points after 30 games played. 48 is the goal difference. Rangers also 48 on 70 points, a point behind Celtic, but with a game in hand. So Rangers take on Dundee tomorrow. If they win that, obviously they restore their lead at the top of the table by two points. If they lose tomorrow, then obviously they remain in second. If they draw, however, that's when it gets a little bit more interesting because they would get a point, they would go level with Celtic, and the goal difference would also be level, and the games played would also be level. However, Celtic have scored more goals than Rangers. Rangers have conceded less, but Celtic have scored more. So, if Rangers draw tomorrow... Unless it is a 8-8 draw or more, then Celtic will remain top of the table. So pressure now is on Rangers to go to Dens Park, get a win, and try and regain the top position in the Scottish Premiership. Can they do it? Of course they can do it. I mean, they're, you know, right now they're the best team in the land, but Dundee are, are decent as well. Dundee have won the last four games at Dens Park. So it's going to be a tricky game for Rangers, no doubt about it. But we'll see how things go tomorrow. But as for today, a good win for Celtic. And it's a defeat now that really puts St Johnston in trouble because they are now sitting in 10th place. They've been overtaken by Aberdeen, who won today. Uh, Ross County, who also won today, are now only a point behind St Johnston. So St Johnston are a point away from that uh, relegation playoff spot and they're not playing well at the moment. Craig Lafine came in, he did get a good boost at the team, he got them out of a position that looked like they were doomed. They managed to get up to 10th, you know, they were up, I think they were as high as 8th at one point maybe, uh, and they were looking like they were going to be okay, they were looking like they weren't going to challenge for top 6, but you felt like St Johnson were going to be fine and not be in a relegation battle, but like I said, form recently hasn't been that great, Ross County all of a sudden are winning games, and uh, before you know it, St Johnston now find themselves in a dogfight here for this relegation playoff spot. And uh, eight games to go, only a point in front of Ross County based on the current form. Ross County, you would fancy them to actually finish above St Johnston. So, yeah, right now St Johnston might be the team that gets dragged into that 11 spot. And uh, they could have to play someone for the championship. Right now, it's probably looking like Rafe Rovers. They drew the day, had a chance to go top of the championship. They bottled it, so they remain in second place. Uh, you've got Partick Thistle and Ford. So, yeah, St. Johnson are not going to have an easy... No matter who finishes 11th, 
in the Scottish Premiership. They're not going to have an easy tie in the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, Livingston are definitely going down, but they might not be the only team. Whoever finishes 11th in the table, they're going to have a real battle to stay in the top flight for next season. But anyway, let's end it here with uh, Celtic. They won the game today. Three goals to one. Go top. Uh, Well-deserved win. Probably should have been more than the free one, but they have to settle for free today. Could have easily added an extra four, five, six onto the goal difference, but it wasn't to be, you know, lacked a little bit of clinical finishing up front and just couldn't really stay on, uh, stay on side. Other than that, though, uh, good performance for Celtic. So I'll catch you in the next one, guys. It's been Fog Football. Thanks for watching and peace.